CataractCoach.com. Post trabeculectomy cataract with weak zonio. So when do you implant that CTR and will it be sufficient? So we've got a video here of a patient with a prior trabeculectomy, a non-functional pleb. These patients with prior glaucoma issues, prior surgery, can often have weak zonular support. So here comes the right pan blue dye, some viscoelastic going inside the eye, and let's take a look here at that capsular rexus. Now, I've had people email me, believe me, there are grammar police who tell me, hey, cataract coach, there's one zonule per eye, don't call those fibers zonules. Yeah, yeah, I get it, the one zonule of zin and zonular fibers but understand what colloquial language is and how we normally talk. And please give this man a break. So here comes the rexus, starting off here. Here's the caps rexus forceps. Now it looks pretty good. Oftentimes, if you have very weak zonular support, you can tell as you do the caps rexus, there'll be wrinkling of the anterior lens capsule. And so here it looks pretty good. Not a whole lot of wrinkling in the capsule. It looks reasonably, reasonably supportive enough to get this rexus done pretty nicely. And that's a good looking rexus. I'm glad you used the tripan blue dye. It makes the visualization easier. A little bit of hydrodissection coming across here. And now let's see what we're going to do. Now using a, a hook maybe through this, uh, one of the side ports to rotate the nucleus. Oh, look at the movement. Look at the rexus edge. Why does the rexus edge move so much? Look, the rexus edge is moving. That's the giveaway sign. Totally agree with you at this point. Get that CTR in the eye. That movement of the rexus edge is indicative of a problem here. Interesting CTR, by the way. We don't have this one in the USA. This is a blue one. Most of the ones we have in the USA are clear. Obviously, the color doesn't make a difference, but interesting case. Feeding that CTR inside the eye. But yeah, that giveaway sign is you should not see the rexus moving. When you rotate the nucleus, the caps rexus edge should be pretty still. And let's see, getting that end of the CTR in the capsule bag, boom, there it goes. Now, this is going to give you a lot more support here during nucleus removal. The catch, of course, is it's going to be a little tougher to get the cortex out. Now, look, the rexus doesn't move as much. How interesting is that? So, obviously, the CTR works pretty well here. And let's see, the nucleus removal. I'll also tell you to be extra cautious in eyes that have had a prior history of angle closure they can actually have a very weak zonular support. So buzzing with a phaco probe there and then getting that chopper nice and deep. Let's see if you can propagate that chop. It's a pretty dense cataract. There you go. That's a nice looking chop. Get that split all the way through. If it doesn't go all the way through, no big deal. Just buzz in again and try more. Sometimes these dense cataracts are petaloid, meaning they're, they're like uh, petals of a flower and the back of the nucleus, the posterior lens plate is kind of fibrous and sticky and it prevents the pieces from fully separating of course the solution there is just chop chop and more chop so again i like the technique there multiple chops over and over good really really good job here by the way good draping also incision construction looks pretty good i like this case all around now removing that nucleus i would sit temporally to operate temporally this surgeon looks like it's sitting superiorly to operate temporally hey whatever makes you happy it's really not that critical. Now, getting this nucleus rotated, there's a lot more stability there now in the caps or bag with that CTR being placed. And again, buzzing into this nucleus, you just want to take your time and chop this in smaller pieces. Now, you're lucky in this case that there's a non-functional bleb. If the bleb was functional, remember, that's an additional source of outflow. What's the one source of fluid inflow? Well, your BSS bag or bottle. And what's your outsource of fluid, your outflow? Your outflow is through the phaco tip, which you aspirate, leakage through the incisions, because the para and the main incision do leak, remember, in order, to, in order to cool the phaco needle, but also fluid going out of or egress of fluid through your trab site if the trab was functional. So all those together combine to give outflow. And remember, we gotta balance that inflow with the outflow in order to get chamber stability and have less risk of caps rupture. So I like this little extra recoating of viscoelastic on the cornea as well as in the eye. And now using a Simcoe cannula to just kind of get pieces mobilized here. There's a, is that mostly lens cortex. Yeah, it looks like cortex and so maybe some epinuclear shell that can be aspirated pretty much. 
Taking your time here. Look at that. It's looking like a pretty reasonable line now. More viscoelastic going inside the eye. Always cheap. This looks like HPMC hydroxypropyl methylcellulose. A very nice, inexpensive viscoelastic. Outside the U.S., that viscoelastic is literally $1 or $2 a tube. In the U.S., you'll be shocked it's $50 a tube. Well, same with the tripan. Tripan in the USA is about $66 for one tube of tripan. And in other countries, it's usually a dollar or two, sometimes even less. So cleaning up here, the lens cortex. Again, as you pull the cortex out, what do you want to look at? The rexus edge. Make sure the rexus doesn't move, and it does not. And notice how it's a little bit more effort to remove the cortex because that caps are tension and that CTR is holding it in place. So it looks great. Look at that caps are opening here. Let's see what we got here. It looks like an IOL being put into an injector. Get that in the eye. So really nice case here. I like the way this surgeon approached the case. It's a beautiful outcome for this patient. Hopefully the optic nerve is still reasonable despite the history of glaucoma. And hopefully this cataract surgery will help lower the IOP. If it's an insufficient lowering of IOP, of course, in the post op period, you can do another procedure, such as a, a you know, other glaucoma procedure. So cleaning up here at the end of the case, viscoelastic coming out of the eye. Again, I'm looking at that erexus edge. It is stable. Really nice case. So thanks for sending your case in. Yeah, I like your CTR placement. Great idea and beautiful outcome for this patient.